This is the GTX 760 out of the potato basher. It's pretty boring. Reference cooler, got a couple ports, doesn't fill up with dust that much. Not that loud, nothing to write home about, but a very good card and I would say one of the hardest working test video cards on YouTube. Awesome card for the money. And a lot of you guys have asked me, well hey, what about putting your GTX 980 Ti into the Potato Masher to see how well the 750 handles it? And we're not gonna do that. I was gonna do that, it seemed like a good idea, I was all excited to do it, uh, but we're not going to. Instead, we're gonna test this 1080. So you might be wondering why I'm going to put a GPU that costs almost $700 into a computer that costs $375, including its GPU. And on the surface, no, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, and there's no real reason to pair a CPU from 2009 with a GPU from 2016. But that's kind of the point. Uh, I've gotten a lot of comments from people who think I should have gotten a G3258 or a G4400 or a newer CPU of some kind and that the i5-750 is just too old, just too slow, and won't be able to keep up with modern gaming. So what better way to find out if there's a true CPU bottleneck than putting the fastest GPU currently on the market into the potato masher. Now, a couple caveats. Yes, the i5-750 is overclocked to 3.7 gigahertz. A stock clocked one would likely be quite a bit slower in when it comes to games. So that's something important to consider, but uh, overclocked to 3.7 gigahertz is not that aggressive for an i5-750. I've seen numerous people getting theirs to four or 4.2. So I'd say most people can probably get theirs to 3.5 and then 3.6, 3.7 isn't that much of a stretch. So not an extremely aggressive overclock, but it is overclocked and that definitely makes a difference. Another caveat, yes, it is definitely going to bottleneck. The 750 will at some point bottleneck the GTX 1080. What I want to know is how bad, and is it a really big deal for everyday gaming, or is it something you won't really notice unless you're looking at a performance overlay? Big thanks to Evil Viking 13, my good friend Dave, for letting me borrow his GTX 1080 when he got it. Actually, before he even put it in his computer, I borrowed it from him and popped it into the potato masher and did these quick tests for you. Now, how I'm doing these tests is I'm taking my personal PC, which here are the specs of both on screen, or all the specs that matter for gaming at least. My personal PC has a 4790K overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz, so a strong enough CPU that it has so far never been bottlenecked in a game. It's never been maxed out in a game. I have 32 gigs of RAM, a GTX 980 Ti non-reference edition, an 850 watt power supply, 240 gig boot SSD, two terabyte drive I put all my games on, and a Nashua NHD14 CPU cooler that lets me hit pretty awesome overclocks. Although, to be honest, 4.5 gigahertz on a 4790K isn't that awesome. So, my personal PC CPU is quite a bit faster than the i5-750 in the potato masher. Like, significantly faster in every possible way. It's a hyper-threaded quad-core, much, much faster per megahertz, and it is running at a quite higher clock speed. I've lowered my GTX 980 Ti's overclock to nothing, so it's not running at a reference cooler's clock speed, it's running at whatever this Zotac came at absolutely bone stock, which is a slight overclock over the GTX 980 Ti reference model, but that's okay because the GTX 1080 that I borrowed from Dave is also overclocked from the factory, and I didn't overclock it any farther either. Now, as far as which settings I used, I used the exact settings that I play on on my personal PC every day. So these graphic settings are not directly comparable, and these benchmarks are not directly comparable to any other GTX 980 Ti review or review of any of the three games I chose to test. They're only comparable in this particular situation. So I matched settings across both machines. I downclocked my graphics card to its stock speed, which means that the performance of my computer will actually be a bit worse than it is normally, but I didn't want to have a super aggressive overclock on mine and then no overclock on the 1080. What I'm looking at is the relative performance of both of these cards together in games on two different computers with two wildly different CPUs. All else being equal, a GTX 1080 should be about 25% faster than a 980 Ti. About. It depends on the game, it depends on the situation, it depends on a lot of things. So here's the super unscientific way I'm going to test this. If the Potato Masher with the 1080 is 25% faster than the 980 Ti, roughly, 
roughly 25% faster. Then there's not much of a CPU bottleneck, if any. If it's about equal or just a little bit faster, there is a CPU bottleneck, but it's not that bad. It's something you could live with. You are losing a little bit of performance, but it's not a big deal. If it's running slower than the 980 Ti, that is a significant bottleneck, and there's really no point having a GTX 1080 with a CPU this old. So the three games I chose are Doom, GTA 5 Online, and The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. Up first is Doom. Now, Doom is not a super aggressive game when it comes to using the CPU. I never really saw more than about 80% usage on any core on the Potato Masher, and that is enough to have a slight bottleneck if all four cores are running that much. But most of the time, it was running about 30 to 60% across all four cores. So it's using the CPU pretty well, but it's not using it that aggressively. And the way I tested this was I loaded up Fraps, I loaded up the same section of each game, so in Doom I played the first level twice at each resolution on each computer, and then I averaged out the max, the minimum, and the average frame rates. This is all according to Fraps, of course. Now for Doom, I wouldn't pay too much attention to the minimum frame rates as the game does manually lock you to 60 at certain points when it wants to show you something, so that doesn't really count that much, don't put too much weight in it. But at 1080p, my personal computer maxed out at 152 frames per second and averaged 113 frames per second, while the GTX 1080 and the Potato Masher maxed out at 135 frames per second and averaged 97 frames per second. At 1440p, my computer maxed out at 130 and averaged 100 frames per second, and the Potato Masher with the GTX 1080 maxed out at 133 frames per second and averaged 98. And finally, at 4K, my computer maxed out at 89 frames per second and averaged 64. It actually had a minimum of 49, so it dropped quite a bit below 60 frames per second at points. And the Potato Masher with a GTX 1080 maxed out at 126 frames per second and averaged 87 frames per second. Now, if the, all those numbers look a little bit higher than you think it should, especially at 4K, uh, I do run a little bit of a resolution scale on my personal settings to make sure I can stay at 60 pretty much all the time. So it's not actually running at a full 4K resolution, although 1440p and 1080p are native. So what can we tell from this? Well, my computer has a pretty linear performance degradation. Uh, 1080p is a little bit worse than you'd expect given the performance at 1440p, but the game does have a few unoptimized sections in my opinion and has a little bit squirrely performance, so that's not out of the ordinary. Now, the Potato Masher obviously had a bit of a bottleneck. If you'll notice, its performance at 1080p isn't a whole lot better than its performance at 4K, and even though it doesn't look like there's that much of a CPU bottleneck, there obviously is. So there definitely is a fairly significant CPU bottleneck in this game, even if it doesn't really look like it when you're just looking at the footage. All right, let's move on to The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. Now, this game is extremely demanding on both the CPU and GPU. On the Potato Masher, there were numerous sections where I saw 100% maxed out CPU usage on all four cores, and most of the time the CPU usage stayed pretty dang high. So at 1080p, my personal computer maxed out at 80 frames per second and averaged 69 frames per second with a minimum of 45 frames per second. The Potato Masher maxed out at 79 frames per second, averaged 67 frames per second, and at a minimum of 44 frames per second, so just slightly lower all across the board, there definitely is a CPU bottleneck. At 1440p, my computer maxed out at 61 frames per second, averaged 52, and had a minimum of 42, while the Potato Masher actually did quite a bit better with a max of 71, an average of 58, and a minimum of 45. And then finally at 4K, my computer had a max of 35, average of 29, minimum of 23, and the Potato Masher had a max of 43, an average of 38, and a minimum of 33. And this is riding up and down the big town in Toussaint and then galloping through the woods a little bit. So this is a very demanding area, a bit more demanding than the rest of the game, especially the parts when you're way out in the middle of nowhere. And I was running everything completely maxed out on both systems with the exception of Hairworks. Finally, Grand Theft Auto V Online. Now, online games are going to have a little more variance than an offline game just because there's a balancing server load of a bunch of people you're playing with, a lot of data has to be synced up, a lot more things can go wrong, etc, etc. So you should expect slightly variable performance, but how I measured this is I drove around the town several times, then I drove up into the hills, and then I drove around the town, and did that a couple times for each resolution on each computer and used fraps and averaged it all out. So, 
At 1080p, my personal computer maxed out at 149 frames per second, averaged 96, and at a minimum of 69, while the Potato Masher maxed out at 124, averaged 78, and had a minimum of 61. And there was very, very high CPU usage on both machines, honestly. My computer did not max out, the Potato Masher absolutely did, and all four cores were at 100% quite a bit of the time. At 1440p, my computer maxed out at 130, averaged 87, had a minimum of 63. While the Potato Masher maxed out at 113, had an average of 82 and a minimum of 62. And finally at 4K, my computer maxed out at 63, had an average of 54, and had a drop down to 39, although that was one isolated frame drop, and I'm not really gonna count that because that was very unusual based on the rest of its performance. But the Potato Masher did quite a bit better. It actually maxed out at 77 frames per second, and averaged 67, and had a minimum of 57. So while there is a strong CPU bottleneck throughout this entire game, just like in The Witcher 3, it actually does run better at 4K. And if you notice, on each game, it's exactly the same. The Potato Masher ran as good or better at 4K, showing that there is somewhat of a CPU bottleneck still, but it's not that bad. And even in The Witcher 3, even when the CPU was completely maxed out, it definitely ran close to 25% faster than the 980 Ti at 4K. So why isn't it faster at 1080p? Is there more of a CPU bottleneck at 1080p than 4K? Well, yes, kind of. So the way it works is at 1080p, the graphics card will run as fast as it can, but it will hit a frame rate limit where the CPU just can't supply it enough information and it bottlenecks and the GPU will be loafing along at 40, 50, 60% usage. The GPU could run a lot faster, but the CPU just can't keep up. But as you increase the resolution, the load on the GPU becomes more to where the CPU isn't bottlenecking it that much, the GPU is close to maxing out, and then the GPU gets to work a little bit harder, and that's where you see the 1080 pulling ahead of the 980 Ti, because the 1080 is a faster card, everything else being equal. So what can we learn from this? Well, from looking at this, I think it's obvious that if you want to game at 4K, you're better off getting a 1080 than a 980 Ti, which isn't a surprise to anyone else. Uh, but interestingly, if you wanted to game with an i5-750, you will get more bang for your buck with a GTX 1080 if you play at 4K than if you play at 1080p, because at 1080p, you're really just wasting a lot of the GPU because the CPU can't keep up. So. The i5-750 was definitely bottlenecked in every game I tried, to some degree, but it honestly wasn't as bad as I was expecting. Now, it's absolutely silly to put a GTX 1080 into a rig with an i5-750, and especially with the other budget parts that are in the potato masher. You just need to balance things out more, and you're going to be throwing away money if you get a GTX 1080 for that purpose. But, based on this performance, and based on how well it did relative to the 980 Ti, I don't think it would be that ridiculous to pair an i5-750 with an R9-390, an RX-480, a GTX-970, maybe the GTX-1060 when it comes out, etc, etc. It's not that ridiculous. So if you have an i5-750 and you have not overclocked it and you're thinking about upgrading your CPU, try an overclock first. It probably does a lot better than you think it does. And if yours is overclocked and you haven't pushed it up to 3.5 or higher, Maybe try doing that as long as your temperatures are under control and you know what you're doing. I think the i5-750 is a great budget processor, and it's a shame that motherboards have become quite a bit harder to find since I built the Potato Masher, otherwise I would probably still be recommending it. These days, because the motherboards are a bit harder to find, it's a bit harder to recommend unless you're good at sourcing parts and I'd have to recommend something a little bit newer or a little bit different. But it's still a great CPU and it still performed honestly quite a bit better than I was expecting, even if it did bottleneck the GTX 1080. So thank you guys for watching. I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.